Hello, in uh, this case you will see in the next uh, short uh, video I will show the head and lateral line syndrome, hole in the head disease and spiranucleus and some other problems occurring in freshwater and marine fish. So I hope this case will explain you in some details that can help you to prevent and solve some problems. But if you have questions, please send me your reply and as a, a patron for my Patreon channel, I will try to help you out. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your hobby. Here is our fish disease case number three. It will be about hole in the head disease or head and lateral line syndrome or head and lateral line syndrome HLLS or E called in some short abbreviations on the internet. Well, let's see what we can tell you about it. But first of all, I would recall what I present in many of my presentations is why the fish become sick. And I will go in details on these kind of reasons why the fish become sick for my VIP uh, patrons. There I will explain in detail later on in, in uh, it's about eight presentations how the fish can uh, become sick, what are the reasons, what are the causes. But to give you here in short that the fish have an immune system and there is a pathogen or other different pathogens available in the environment, in the water, in the food and the quality of the water and the quality of the food and the handling and the stress these are all having an impact on the quality of the fish depending also particularly how strong is the immune system of the fish so this is an important thing to know before we start thinking how that head and lateral line disease can occur because the hole in the head disease is a syndrome it's the damage of the lateral line as you can see here on the Oscar and it's a syndrome because we cannot specify a specific disease there's not one disease which can say well this is causing the holes a bacteria or a parasite or anything else so far we don't know yet science has not showing anything but what we know from science there are many different origins of this syndrome that the fish start to show holes in the head the holes in the head is about damage of the lateral line and if you can see here on the this drawing the lateral line is on the side of the body it's a canal system it's for the behavior and the balance in the water it's different functions and also this lateral line goes around the eyes and the upper region of the head and here on the jaw and it's it's an open canal with some sensory hairs and some fluids that can flow in through pores and it's the pores and those canals which are getting damaged getting holes inside so as you can see here on the Oscar I will not go into technical detail how this all occur but I will try to explain you with the samples I got in my in my work as a fish doctor what is really causing it I got fish presented or in my fish house in the past like this discus here which start to show these holes here as you can see here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve holes which are clearly visible also the lateral line started to show some uh, erosion also you can see here the pectoral fin is getting some damage could be bacteria possible because the fish is having a problem a fish health problem in the first stages we only see very few holes like on this discus here you can see here on the forehead of this discus that's where it starts in the head area that's when you're keeping fish or cichlids or the fish I'll explain later on the species which are susceptible to have this syndrome it's important to watch for those first symptoms those first signs the holes in the head see the same here the first stage is here and here the here the little line is getting eroded and here is a hole and there is a hole that's the first thing you have to watch that something goes wrong HLLS or the head and lateral line syndrome also occurs in our marine fish 
here on this Iprazoma, here on this Paracanturus, here in a video where I was uh, visiting the public aquarium in St. Petersburg. In St. Petersburg, they had beautiful fish tanks, but some fish tanks, the fish were suffering, like here, this blue doctor, of head and lateral line syndrome, erosion, discoloration, uh, holes in the head, this occurred particularly in the angel doctor fish. Here we can see again on this Ibrazoma. In the first stages in the marine fish, sometimes we see in the younger fish no holes yet, but they start to show pale patches around the area. Here on this Ibrazoma, pale patches, the fish are getting skinny, they do not show holes, the fish suffer, and some fish die. The erosion of the letter line usually occurs by mature fish, adult fish. And the damage is caused by several factors. I will explain you. Here on the head of this Achilles tang, and here you see the letter line, the erosion of the letter line of this Achilles tang. Typical for adult mature fish. The younger fish don't show that much holes yet. They usually die before they show the holes. And in most cases, like in these two examples here of these fish, this discus fish and this Chetodontopolis, these two species, we found a massive infection of Spironuclus, parasites, used to be called hexamita. We found them in the intestine. Here you see the lead, also the holes appearing on the head area and on the lateral line of this Chetodontopolis in marine fish and also on the discus. And if we took an examination and we look at the 300 magnification of the gut, the intestine of a discus, we see a massive amount of tiny swirling, swarming parasites in the gut, causing damage, causing lesions, causing disease, infection. So the parasite is very often found in these cases. But they cause damage, these parasites, but they do not cause holes. It weakens the fish, and it kills young fish. Here, this discus fish, the blue cobalt discus, hardly had any holes, very few holes, but they were dying. Some getting dark, getting weak, and they had a massive infection of spironucleus. So the parasites are in the intestine and causing a bad intestinal wall or damage. They're causing diarrhea. You can see the excrements getting watery fluid strings hanging out. The less food uptake, less essential nutrients are taken up by the fish. They cause damage to the intestine, the wall of the intestine. And later on, they can move into the body cavity. And they can, parasites can also move around in the organs and spread around into the body. They also spread around in the water. They do not cause holes. If we find some of those parasites in the holes, it's because the fish might be shipped in a small bag with thousands of parasites floating into the water and of course they will occur on the skin and in the holes but they're not causing holes from inside to the outside I was in the impression when I wrote an article on that in 1982 in an American magazine I thought it was so because I found these cases but later on I didn't found it anymore because I was taking clear exam scrapings from the fish scraping from the holes and I couldn't find the parasites in the holes when the fish was taken from the fish tank. In the shipping bag was different because the parasites were massive around in the shipping water. The fish will eventually become weak with the parasite, the young fish will die, the older fish can live a long time with the parasite and in most of the cases they start to show a lateral line damage in the organ and that's usually we see the combination parasites combined with lateral line disease. We find this spironucleus parasite in many different species. We found it in geophagus, in marine fish, in freshwater fish, in the angelfish, the discus, the bytodoma species, uaru, geophagus, apistogramma, oscar cichlids, african cichlids, arowana, mostly in cichlids, freshwater. Marine fish we found it in the Zebrazoma, Acanturus, Paracanturus, Zanclus, Pomacanthus, Centropige, Chetototopus, 
mostly we found it in doctor, surgeon and emperor fish. But that does not mean we cannot find it in other species. I had cases where I found it in neon tetra. Very rare, but it can happen. But I can say here, we mostly found it in cichlids. Surgeon doctor, particularly the head and lateral line syndrome. We do not find it in the neon tetra, the head and lateral line syndrome, because the neon tetras die before they can show any holes with the parasites. So we found it particularly in these species where the lateral line is eroded and has a syndrome of holes. The origin of lateral line syndrome, well, like I said, it's not a disease. It's called a syndrome because we have different factors. Like here at this discus breeder, had these kind of big holes in the head. What we found? Well, we found that the bad microbiome, usually caused by an antibiotic medication, possible, which makes the gut flora very poor, could be damaged. It could be damaged, the bad, uh, the microbiome, the healthy gut flora, could be damaged by frozen or live food, which is polluted with bad bacteria. Stress can be a cause, poor water quality, overcrowding, aggression. Stress has a factor on the health of the fish and immunity of the fish. Introduction of new fish with spironucleus. This could be a risk that the fish get infected with a uh, diseased fish brought into the fish tank. The parasites, spironucleus, are infecting the intestine, also the abdomen, and also the organs. But they cannot be found in the holes. The these are all factors together can be a problem. They can at the same time appear secondary bacterial infections, like here. Bacteria are secondary infecting the damaged tissue. A permanent filtration with active carbon or ozone we found as a cause, particularly in marine fish, because the active carbon and the ozone eliminate essential nutritional elements in marine water, because the fish take it up mostly from the marine water and it was missing in this kind of cases where we found it in, in public aquaria particularly, where they use a lot of active carbon to keep the water sparkling clean. But the sparkling clean water had a disadvantage, that the fish were missing ele ele nutritional elements. And those fish, many doctor fish, surgeon fish, were suffering from hole in the head syndrome. What can we do to prevent the parasites and the head heterodyne line syndrome? Well, first of all, Provide good water conditions, prevent stress, make sure you have good filtration, you do regular water changes, look at the severum with the holes, this is advanced stage in a big adult fish. Avoid permanent carbon filtration, ozone, especially for marine aquaria, but also for fresh water, because carbon takes out essential elements out of the water. So it's good to have clean water, but as a permanent filtration, not necessary. Do it when needed. When the water is getting color, some a little bit color. Do it once in a while or after a medication. Prevent overcrowding. We see quite often that in overcrowded conditions, with combination of poor filtration, is a cause of this syndrome. Make sure when you have new fish, you use a quarantine, so you don't introduce the fish with diseases. Provide food with without without any pathogenic bacteria. Make sure you check the frozen or live food you give or try to give less live or frozen food, like mosquito larvae, tubifex, daphnia. They very often contain a lot of pathogenic bacteria, which I explained are bad uh, source for the, uh, for the gut flora, which can have an impact on your healthy gut bacteria. Try to give food with garlic and leopard shawl. This helps in prevention and defense of the fish, so you can do some actions. So therefore, when we come to the treatment of spironucleus and head line syndrome, like here on the geophagus, control the stress and improve the conditions. I cannot end up repeat this. Stop carbon filtration, stop ozone, particularly when you want to treat. A medication is metronidazole or dimetronidazole. Those are two medications, uh, similar medicines, 
like the ones like Hexamor, for instance, available on the market from Akpara Munster, they kill parasites like Spironucleus and Hexamita, called. We recommend to feed a special food we have with 14 to 20 days feeding program with biofish food Lapacho that contains garlic, Lapacho and probiotics to help repair the fish and fight off the parasites. So this helps to control the condition of the fish and repair the gut flora and repair the damage. But be aware that a big fish who has a lot of damage will have some scars remaining eventually. The longer you wait, the worse the case will be. So I hope this helped you, that I give you some opportunities to keep your fish healthy. And I can tell you that a food should be your medicine and our medicine should be our food, but you select your food. So I thank you for your interest to become a better aquarist and follow my next movies on fish cases. Thank you.